same. Yusuke on the left hand side of your screen will be running Tyranitar, Gastrodon, Excadrill, Rotom Heat, Hitmontop, and Togekiss against Negan's team, uh, which looks very familiar, it, of Charizard, <laughs> Tonkelder, Jellicent, uh, Duraludon, Whimsicott, and Togekiss. Yeah, so Megan running the exact same team like Aaron Trailer used to win, of course, the Dallas Regional Championships just a couple of weekends ago. And Yusuke also kind of running a team that I would say kind of feels like an earlier meta team, you know, uh, especially with the Tranchar, Excadrill, Gastrol, and Togekiss. But as we just saw on stream, it's a really, really good Pokemon. And uh, I think uh, Hitmontop and Rotom Heat you know, complete the core really nicely. Hitmontop not seen as much as it used to, say, in 2013, 2012, or even 2016 <laughs> when it was able to win the World Championships. But definitely, you know, has a role in the metagame. Not sure we'll see it as much here because, uh, you know, the only thing you're intimidating is Conkelder. And even against that, you probably have better am answers. So as always, we kind of have the classic, like one team has Tailwind here. The other team doesn't have Tailwind, but multiple means of speed control through Max Airstream from Togekiss. Extra can just naturally be pretty fast as well. So, uh, you know, Megan using Aaron's team, like the Conkelder here is so essential into this matchup because it beats the Excadrill, it beats the Gastron, it beats the Tyranitar. So I think you're always bringing that. So then the question is, okay, how do you beat the rest of the Pokemon, which are uh, the Togekiss, uh, the Rotom, and the Hitmontop? Probably don't have to worry as much about the Hitmontop. So then you're mainly looking at Togekiss and Rotom. And, uh, you know, Duraludon, an excellent Pokemon to deal with that. You also have Jellison, potentially, if you're really worried about the speed, you have, you know, the Tail Room option. But I think Wimscott Duraludon is often a very consistent lead here because Duraludon is such a good matchup against everything, pretty much. Yeah, and on Yusuke's side of the field, he will be leading the Tyranitar and the Togekiss. So uh, some potential for redirection, but if that Duraludon is running Stalwart, like we did see on Eren's team a couple of weeks ago, then that might not be a good option for Yusuke to start this game off with. Yeah, I think uh, Wimscott and Duraludon right now definitely put on a lot of pressure because of the threat of fake tears max steel spike into the togekiss uh, now you can't fake tears the tyranitar because it's dark type and you might also want to consider setting up a tailwind on whimsicott because whimsicott could go down after this turn due to the sand uh, for example if togekiss decides to dynamax on yusuke sand could just pick up a knockout onto it but actually to switch out gonna go into rotom does not want to take a max steel spike here immediately yeah and i do not blame that togekiss for switching out you know wanting to avoid that super effective damage and you know i think rotom has a very interesting spot on the field as well giving that it can deal some nice damage to that whimsicott and the duraludon on megan's side of the field yusuke starting this game off with a dynamax from that tyranitar it is going to use that dynamax Max energy to just grow and really threaten the Pokemon on Megan's side of the field. No Dynamax from her either. Instead, Fake Tears connecting with that Rotom to lower its special defense and a Flash Cannon from that Duraludon just oh. doesn't do any damage because it is not very effective. But we do see the reveal of the Life Orb on that Duraludon. We also oh. see the reveal of the Max Knuckle from that Tyranitar just able to KO wow. that Duraludon easy. Yeah, that's a big knockout there. That's Surprised huge. to kind of not see the Dynamax on Duraludon. That is typically the Pokemon that likes the Dynamax, but a uh, big reveal there as well. The Life Orb on Tyranitar, you often see the weakness policy. So really, really nice play by Yusuke there. Super safe. Uh, and, you know, it's very rare, I think, for Megan to go for, like, a Draco Meteor or a Dragon-type attack into the Rotom slot. So, uh, Megan does get in what I think is probably her best Pokemon in this matchup, which is that Conkelder. Uh, might even want to consider Dynamaxing it. Uh, the thing, like, you have to worry about if you're using Conkelder is, of course, that Togekiss in the back. But I think Conkelder is just so good against everything else on Yusuke's team. And uh, because you've already committed to Dynamaxing Tyranitar, uh, you know, Especially if you're ha you have the Assault Vest on Conkelder, then Togekiss's Dazzling Gleams and Air Slashes really won't do too much damage. So despite that being, I think, what was a really, really good turn one for Yusuke, it's not over by any means. And uh, Megan gets her best Pokemon in this matchup in a very safe position. Can even set up uh, something like Tailwind now, Dynamax the Conkelder, and start going for Max Knuckles. And even just knowing that that Tyranitar is not holding the weakness policy, yeah. too, is really going to change, I think, her mindset going into this game. Because a lot of times we've seen trainers avoid attacking the Tyranitar, afraid of setting off that weakness policy. But that's no longer something she needs to be afraid of, you know. It's going to be doing some consistent damage with the help of that Life Orb. Which means that a Pokemon like the Conkelder, which is going for the Dynamax over on her side of the field, should be able to use those Max Knuckles to deal big damage, boost its own attack up effectively, and hopefully find a way to sort of power through this Togekiss and Tyranitar combination that has been sent out on the field for Yusuke. 
Yeah, so I gotta wonder if Tyranitar goes for a max guard here and does go for that, so we'll protect it from any fighting type attacks. So just can kill their target, the Togekiss here. Well, Whimsicott is going to use this opportunity to get a Tailwind up on the field, which may or may not come in handy given how fast this Punk Elder uh, may or may not be. Max Knuckle will also connect with that max guard. Yeah, so that's a big deal there because, uh, you know, you essentially waste a turn of Dynamax on Conkelder's end. Now Tyranitar is protected, so you can go for a follow me and Tyranitar can just launch an attack and doesn't have to worry about eating up a Max Knuckle. So had Max Knuckle gone into the Togekiss there, you get the attack boost and then Conkelder can maybe go for like a Max Rockfall, Max Lightning. And oh, oh, Ally Switch Togekiss! <laughs> that's not a follow me at no. all. <laughs> Instead, Togekiss switching places with that Tyranitar. <laughs> Moonblast going into that Tyranitar, going to drop its special attack by a stage, which will not come in handy, but the mass hailstorm from that Kung Helder, indicating that this Kung Helder is running some sort of ice type attack, will connect with that Tyranitar, will also have the benefit of removing the sand from the field. So both those attacks were most likely trying to target down that Togekiss to pick up the knockout. So instead, the Tyranitar is free to pick up the KO on that Whimsicott here, thanks to a max rock ball, and also immediately bring that sand right back. Yeah, well played by Yusuke, and I think uh, Ally Switch is not an attack you see very often on Togekiss, but this position specifically shows why it's good, right? Uh, it's so, like, once again, it's so hard to predict an Ally Switch if your opponent hasn't revealed it, so often that very first one is pretty safe to go for, and now you don't even have to lose the Togekiss, right? If Togekiss went for Follow Me, then Moonblast and Max Hailstorm probably gets the knockout there. Dynamax now does end on Yusuke's end, but he is up 2-4 once again. You do have the threat of the uh, the follow me, and I have to wonder if a water spout from Jellicent will do enough to Tyranitar in sand, because if not, then you can pretty easily go for a follow me crunch, and they'll knock out the Jellicent unless it's running Culberberry, uh, and that will probably just end the game, especially with Rotom and Togekiss in the back. But if water spout actually is able to pick up the knockout onto Tyranitar, then maybe you just click something like water spout, max hailstorm into the Togekiss. So I, I think it's tough because you don't really want to switch the Togekiss out into Rotom. I um, have to wonder if, like, what the last Pokemon is, basically, at this point. But, uh, yeah, despite it being up 2-4, like, Megan does have a position to get a lot of damage off because she has Tailwind right now, she has the Threat of Water Spell and one more turn of Dynamax, but uh, for me, I have to wonder, basically, is this Tyranitar trained to survive a Water Spell? Yeah, and you also have to wonder if that Gastrodon is going to be the last Pokemon that is, Yusuke yeah. brought, because this would be a great opportunity for that Gastrodon to pick up a special attack boost thanks to that Storm Drain. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it cannot protect its partner from this Water Spout, so that Tyranitar will still be taking oh! damage, but it is not enough to pick up a KO. It is just able to hold on as a Max Hailstorm from this Punk Elder oh. will connect with the Gastrodon. So fortunately for Megan, the hail damage at the end of this turn should be able to pick up the KO from that Tyranitar, but it will have an opportunity to go for an attack here. And also oh, that wow. um, activates the <laughs> Key Berry on the Gastrodon to raise its defense by one stage. So between this crunch on the Tyranitar, picking up a KO on that Jellicent thanks to a critical hit, and the Key Berry activation on that Gastrodon, I think this Kunk Elder is going to have a really tough time sort of finding a way to pick up the two knockouts, the three knockouts it needs to win this game. Yeah, I think uh, UCA played that really well. You know, the Togekiss switch in there, you know that it's probably going to, Jellicent's going to be clicking Water Spout here. So then the question is, is Conkelder targeting the Togekiss or is it going to target down the uh, Tyranitar? I think UCA covers all his options there because if Water Spout picks up the knockout, like if you go for Follow Me and Water Spout just picks up the knockout on both, then you're actually in a really, really tricky position. Uh, or sorry, if Water Spout picks up the knockout on Tyranitar, Conkelder knocks out Togekiss, then it's like a 2v2. Yeah. Uh, and then things can get a little bit more awkward. So. Uh, by pulling out the switch there, it you know, covers all your options. If uh, water, if water spell doesn't knock out Tyranitar, Tyranitar just gets a knockout onto Jellicent like we saw. And Kelder in that position, not going for an attack into the Tyranitar slot, expecting maybe a follow me from Togekiss. So maybe to cover that, Megan maybe could have gone for a max killstorm into Tyranitar, but that's a tough prediction to make. Yeah, and something interesting here is that uh, Yusuke is really keen on protecting that Togekiss, you know, switching out the Togekiss for that Rotom. Gastrodon going for a recover here, even though, you know, he does have the Pokemon advantage and most likely is going to find a way to deal the damage to KO this Punk Helder. I find it really interesting that he's, you know, not only stalling out this Tailwind, but also trying to keep as much information about that Togekiss secret. You know, we saw the mm -hmm. ally switch. That is such an uncommon move. You have to wonder if he's running something else that is unexpected on that Pokemon that he wants to keep from Megan. Yeah, so... Switching back and forth right now, uh, Togekiss, however, a great Pokemon to bring in against Kinkelder. 
Could be a little risky there, honestly, because you'd rather try to get a free switch in as opposed to maybe you can tell they're calling that and going for an ice punch. So I feel like it might have been a little bit safer just to sacrifice the Rotom there. But uh, yeah, in this position, like Gaushon doesn't want to click Scald because you don't want to potentially burn Kinkel there, activate Guts if it is Guts. Yeah, it, it's going to be a slower sort of end of the game, but really Yusuke has all the pieces he needs to, you know, win. I think it's the question to me is how much information do these trainers want to reveal at this point? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Megan is certainly able to forfeit whenever uh, she feels like she doesn't want to give up more information, but uh, Yusuke is going to just keep going on the offensive as a Dazzling Gleam is enough to pick up the KO onto that Kunkelder as Yusuke wins game one of this round seven of Swiss. Yeah, I think uh, the... Around eight, excuse me. The, the first thing to point out is, I mean, Max Knuckle from Tyranitar, Dynamax just one hit KO and Duraludon, even know. without the critical hit. I mean, uh, shows you the power of Life Orb Tyranitar. Uh, I think players often don't expect that damage output because people are so used to weakness policy Tyranitar, and suddenly you add a Life Orb to it just does, you know, kind of throws all the calcs that you're used to completely off guard. So, it really interesting to see that. I think Megan might want to consider Dynamaxing the Duraludon on turn one. Like, she didn't really get very much Dynamax off Kinkelder. If you Dynamax Kinkelder, you basically have to predict the Togekiss. If you knock out Togekiss, then Kinkelder sweeps the entire team. But uh, the problem for Megan in that last game was that she wasted the first turn of Dynamax. Now she knows Ally Switch at least exists, so it's a little easier to play around. So you might want to fish for those Togekiss switch-ins, go for a Max Hill Swarm when something... You have two Pokemon are weak to Tyranitar and try to, you know, just do a lot of damage to it on the switch in. That could be really, really huge. I think... Uh, you know, seeing ally switch as well makes me think that the Togekiss maybe isn't as offensive, like a more support-oriented one, so you don't have to worry about it Dynamaxing as much. So I think Megan definitely has the tools to win this one. I think it's really tough to bring Charizard into a matchup when you have both Tyranitar and Excadrill. Like, it's just really not doing that much, especially if it is that G-Max Charizard that we saw um, you know, Aaron Trailer use. And I think it's, like, the Pokemon she brought felt okay. Like, I don't know how much Togekiss really offers in this matchup. Once again, Togekiss also kind of weak to Tyranitar control, so I feel like she has the right tools, and she brought the right Pokemon, but just needs a little bit better execution. Yeah, and I think the fact that we know that the Tyranitar is not the Pokemon holding the weakness policy is mm -hmm. certainly going to give her a lot more flexibility. Yes. You know, going back to that turn one of game one, it felt like she was really trying to avoid attacking it to, you know, avoid activate that weakness policy so that the Duraludon could then later go in and start attacking when it was able to pick up that knockout a little bit easier. Now that she knows that it's not carrying it, I, I want to say that the adjustment I want to see from her going into this game too is more of a mentality adjustment mm. rather than the Pokemon that she brought. You know, just knowing that she can go for those big attacks immediately, I think will really sort of change how that game would play out. I mean, Yusuke certainly has a lot of defensive pieces on his side of the field as well, and I think that's something that she still has to be very careful about. But I agree with what you said. You know, she does have all the right Pokemon. She has all the right pieces. It's just a matter of putting them together a little bit differently in this game too. Yeah, and you can imagine just how different the game first game would have gone if Dorado on Dynamax's Ghost from Max Steel Spike into either of the Pokemon. Not only do you have so much more bulk because of the Dynamax, but the Steel Spike also gives you that defense boost, allowing you to survive so much more easily. So uh, I think that's a really great point now that you know it's not weakness policy Tyranitar. You can probably get a two hit KO onto it with Max Steel Spike. So perhaps you prioritize that a little bit more. Maybe you don't even need to lead the Whimsicott because t uh, Tailwind doesn't feel like a total necessity. Uh, but we are just going to see the Whimsicott, which I think is still a super safe option. And we'll see if Yusuke adjusts here. Looks like Rotom's going to come out. Yeah, Rotom and the Excadrill out on Yusuke's side of the field. So two completely different Pokemon against Megan's uh, same lead of that Duraludon and that Whimsicott. So a very interesting adjustment. You know, that Excadrill is certainly better um, at threatening the Duraludon. And same thing with that Rotom. So you have to wonder if uh, Megan's going to, you know, commit and go for the Dynamax or if she's going to be forced to switch. As Yusuke starts things off immediately with a switch of his own, sending in that Togekiss for the Rotom, and no Dynamax from Megan. Instead, going immediately for a Protect onto that Duraludon, Whimsicott using this opportunity to set up a Tailwind and Excadrill free to attack on Yusuke's side of the field, going for a Earthquake. So not going to deal any damage to the Togekiss or that Duraludon, but will deal a nice chunk of damage to that Whimsicott, certainly break a potential Focus Sash as well. Yeah, one thing that's really important to know that this is also Mold Breaker Excadrill. So uh, even if you switch in Tyranitar, like, you're not getting the speed boost. So Duraludon actually will outspeed everything. And I think Duraludon Dynamax is actually really good at this point because you can get either attack drops on Excadrill or defense boosts, and both are pretty good. So I like the play from both players on turn one. I think Megan going for a safer route does not want to just, you know, take a lot of damage to get KO'd. Um, Tailwind Protect is interesting in this metagame because of dynamic speed changes, but it still definitely makes sense in some positions, and I think that was a position where you could just scout out for what your opponent wants to do. Uh, I think, like, Yusuke was maybe hoping to bait out, like, a fake tier's max Warm Wind into Rotom, 
if your opponent does go for that and you get that earthquake off, then you're in a pretty good position. But now Megan has, you know, speed control. Uh, she's able to Dynamax the route on, get some really big Max Steel Spike or Warm Winds off. I think Steel Spike is probably the better play. You can go for a Max Steel Spike and uh, Max uh, Fake Tears. Uh, that should knock out the Togekiss and should do a ton of damage to Excadrill. Yeah, and I like how there is no Pokemon on the field that really would prevent that Prankster from connecting, such as the Tyranitar. So Whimsicott is a little bit more free to attack here um, compared to some other situations we've seen Whimsicott in in previous rounds of this tournament. Yusuke going for a Dynamax of his own, going to be Dynamaxing that Togekiss. So no more potential for, for redirection. Instead, this Togekiss is going to be looking to deal, you know, a lot of damage to the opposing Pokemon on Megan's side of the field. And you have to wonder if a oh. potential fake tears or maybe even a charm in this case to uh, drop the attack of that Excadrill by two stages is going to be enough to allow this Duraludon to stick around on the field. The max steel spike from that Duraludon brings Togekiss down into the red and will also boost the defense of both of Megan's Pokemon by one stage. So this Excadrill won't be doing a lot of damage, but you know what will be? There's <laughs> that, the weakness there's policy. There's the weakness policy revealed on that Togekiss. So it will be dealing a ton of damage, potentially enough to pick up the KO on either the Whimsicott or the Duraludon on Megan's side of the field. It's going for the Starfall to target the Duraludon, and thanks to that weakness policy, it is enough for the knockout. Yeah, so big reveal there from Yusuke, and despite running Ally Switch, it's still kind of an offensive Togekiss, so a lot of mind games there, and I, you know, Megan probably expecting the Excadrill to Dynamax there, so going for the Charm to try to make it relatively useless. I was thinking that maybe she could go for like a Fake Tears Max Steel Spike play, because that covers a lot of options, even like Ally Switch, but uh, ultimately, yeah, able to just get a big knock onto the Raladon. Now, Jellison is able to come in, and with Tailwind being up, you know, you could just go for something like a Moonblast and a Water Spout, which does a ton of damage. However, as we saw, uh, there was a Gastron in the back in Game 1, and I think that would be the perfect Pokemon to switch into if you have it on Yusuke's end right now. What you want to do is probably stall out the Tailwind, knock out Limsicott on the last turn of Tailwind, and then try to maybe sweep with uh, Excadrill uh, later on in the game. Yeah, and this Togekiss is a perfect example of what we were talking about earlier with that, you know, defensive move such as Ally Switch to turn into Max Guard when you're a Dynamax Pokemon. You know, allowing Togekiss to run the attacks, run the weakness policy fairly easily as it protects itself Ooh. from the Moonblast and the Shadow Ball from the Jellicent. So that is some, you know, interesting information about this Jellicent on Megan's side of the field. And fortunately, no Storm Drain activation on that Gastrodon switch in either. Yeah, I like the Shadow Ball play there. You know that Extra Drill very rarely is going to stay in that position. Gastron's probably the Pokemon in the back, so why give Gastron an unnecessary special attack boost? I think uh, great Max Guard there from the Togekiss as well, because now Gastron's in a much safer position, and uh, presumably can just knock out this Whimsicott, which means that Tailwind will be over now after this turn. Well, Moonblast just barely misses the KO onto that Togekiss. Shadow Ball immediately follows it up, so this Togekiss is no longer able to attack on Yusuke's side of the field. Gastrodon, though, has the perfect opportunity here to go for a Scald or a Earth Power to pick up the KO onto that Whimsicott. It will be the Earth Power, and it does get the knockout. Yeah, so I think... Uh, you see guys been playing this really, really well. I uh, think the lead adjustment was great, and I think the decision to... I mean, Trantar has even come out, right? Like, yeah. and I think, like, good awareness to realize that, hey, maybe I shouldn't be bringing it. Now, the upside for Megan is that she's put herself in a position where, like, Kinkelder maybe can sweep in this late game. Yeah, the Jellison is certainly in a good spot with the Tailwind still on the field to target down that Rotom. But there is the threat of that Gastrodon, and you have to be careful. Even though you might be trading a knockout for a special attack boost on that Gastrodon, those can really add up after a while. Yeah, it's actually going to be quite the close finish because, like, Kinkelder, as we were talking about, has a really good matchup against all of Yusuke's Pokemon other than Togekiss. And this time, Vigo was actually able to knock out the... Uh, Togekiss, but here we go. There's just a Thunderbolt. That does oh, so much man. damage. That is a oh, one hit wow. knockout. No critical hit needed onto that Jellicent as Punkelder left to follow up with a Drain Punch to bring Rotom down to just below half of its health with a critical hit. The Gastrodon on Yusuke's side of the field will go for the Earth Power into that Kung Helder, and it doesn't do a lot of damage, which is good, but unfortunately for Megan, it does get that special defense drop, and just like in Game 1, we're in a situation where this Kung Helder really has its work cut out for it. Yeah, I have to wonder how offensive uh, this Rotom is, and I mean, how defensive the Jellison is, because I know uh, Aaron said he even wanted more offense on his, and wow, Thunderbolt wow. just picks up the KO. That I think looks like Choice Specs Rotom, if I had yeah. to guess. Uh, it's obviously